got two primary problematic areas, uh, which are the, the two river inlets coming into the Broncospeit Dam, which are the Ospreit River as well as the Broncospeit River. And together we have approximately 14, 15 hectares of hyacinth in those two river inlets. Als water hyacinth nie beheer word nie, dan het die potentieel om die hele dam oppervlak te betek. So daar is nie sonlig wat kan deerkom nie. Die sierstof in die waterkolom word um, verminder. En sociaal is, die mense kan nie die water gebruik nie, hulle kan nie hulle bote gebruik nie. Firstly, the biocontrol program, which is insects. Scientists call them as the, the Megamalus insect, as well as the Neocatina weevil, which, if you can get a sufficient population density, they bring the plant into stress. The second control is sublethal spraying of, of a herbicide, which is known to, to kill the, the hyacinth, and it's an approved herbicide by Department of Forestry, Fishery and Environment. And then the third uh, control, it's actually to reduce the level of nutrients which are flowing into the, the river catchment area and obviously into the dam itself. And the most effective way uh, to reduce the nutrients that we have as, as a forum or as citizens is to start uh, implementing and establishing uh, wetlands, uh, either rehabilitating existing wetlands or construction of new wetlands. Water hyacinth comes from South America af. En die rede hoekom hy so agressief kan groei, is um, omdat hy nie insekte het wat op hom eet nie. So wat ons as navoorsers doen, is ons gaan na Suid-Amerika en ons gaan soek vir insekte wat op het eet, wat beskadigend is en wat ook baie specifiek is. En ons bring daai in insekte terug na Suid-Afrika en ons stel hulle vry om waterjacint um, te eet en onder beheer te hou. Met biologische beheer, die insekte um, hou nie rarig enige gevaar in nie, juist omdat hulle so specifiek is. So hulle sal nie op ander plante eet nie. The BCMF drives the whole biocontrol program and through their support we do have nine stations. But in terms of ensuring that the, the tunnels are effective, uh, and when should the bugs be released from each tunnel and how to release and where to release, the BCMF controls that, that whole program. Hyacinth is a living organism. It contains carbon. Um, when it dies and sinks to the bottom, it is going to decompose. So there's four known gases that hyacinth releases when it sinks to the bottom. It just depends on in which stage of um, its decomposition it is. Um, it can be methane, it can be carbon dioxide, it can be hydrogen sulfide, or it can be ammonia that is released when it sinks to the bottom. If it all drops at the same time, there is risk. So you can cause a, a deoxygenation effect by having a whole mat of hyacinth drop all at once. But that's why biocontrol, it actually drops at separate times. So it doesn't all drop at once with biocontrol. We use a glyphosate-based herbicide. We use two. One is a glyphosate sodium salt called Kilomax, which does not contain the carcinogenic coformulant. The other one we use is Seismic, which is also teleamine-free. So those are the only two products that we, under our precautionary principles pesticide policy, have recommended and approved for use on, on aquatic ecosystems. We um, looked at what the lethal dosage is of the pesticide on the biocontrol agent. With that, we then worked out what the sub-lethal dosage was of the herbicide so that it would not affect the biological control agent, so that we could integrate the two to make the biocontrol more effective. What we found interesting is that it actually increases the sugar and carbohydrate content of the water hyacinth plant to make it more palatable for the, for the megamelis, the biocontrol agent. It's a whole paradigm shift of how to use herbicides. So the herbicide is used to make the plants more palatable to increase the effectiveness of the biocontrol agents on the plant.
So you can do an aerial sort of sublethal spray, but not a full dose spray. The only problem is drone spraying. The operator of the drone will have to have a civil aviation license. He would need a pest control operator certificate to use the pesticide or the herbicide on the plants. The actual plants with the biocontrol and the sublethal dosage has no impact on agricultural feed. Under the NEMA, NEMBA regulations, you cannot farm water hyacinth, which means that you cannot take off a certain amount of, a day um, and then um, the, the, the population or the biomass of the water hyacinth doesn't get less because it doubles in biomass every five to ten days. The other requirmental condition is to do a shore remediation plan because you are disturbing the bank with if you have your harvester on the bank. When you finished harvesting, you would have to then rehabilitate the bank. Basically, if you are going to transport, you would first have to chip it or mulch it to a certain size so that the risk of dispersal is minimized. And then it would have to be transported in an enclosed truck. The proposed BCMF master plan uh, definitely includes mechanical removal as, as one of the four proposed controls to, to combat the hyacinth. Uh, unfortunately, mechanical removal is very expensive and it's very time consuming. And if those funds are, are not available, well then mechanical removal doesn't become sustainable. That is in contravention of the National Environmental Management Act because it says in, in the NEMBA that it is the landowner slash land user's responsibility to control the invasive alien species on their property. And if you are pushing the water hyacinth downstream, you're basically pushing your responsibility to somebody else. Hyacinth has got a lot of uses. Organic compost is normally the more common ones because it's a much cheaper way of managing the hyacinth. It can be used to make animal feed, um, which is one of the more dominant uses in South Africa. It can be used to make charcoal. It can be used to make biogas, biofuel. Um, it can be used for medicinal purposes due to some later research that's come out. Um, we've even made some gin with it. And yeah, basically it, it is a, a product that can be reused once it's taken out of the water. If you're not addressing the root cause of the problem, you're actually also never going to win the battle. The hyacinth is going to be replaced by algae, it's going to be replaced by hornwort, by salvinia minima, um, various different types of invasives. If we do not address the source of the problem, this is never going to go away. No method on its own is sustainable. The only sustainable method for floating macrophyte control is an integrated method because of the growth rate. So any method on its own is not feasible and will not work. And if your system is hypertrophic, you have, are going to really have to think closely on how to integrate the different methods you're going to use. And Broncos Sprite is hypertrophic. So one method on, on Broncos Sprite Dam will not work. What we've learned to the BCMF now is that you know, fighting hyacinth, uh, there are no quick fixes. You know, the reality, unfortunately, has proven that. We would just like to be able to ensure that the dam economy stays alive, that hyacinth doesn't completely cover the dam, and if we can keep the coverage down you know, to a low level uh, percentage so that people can still enjoy the dam, uh, then that would be wonderful.